Hey everybody, Joe for the Jones Project, and we're back with another video. And guess what? It's another Guitar Center video. Oh man, whoo! Okay, so this past Wednesday, um, the German Butcher came over here. By the way, if you haven't checked out his channel, man, check out the German Butcher on YouTube. Amazing musician. He's a very talented man, and uh, I believe you'd really enjoy his music. We go to Guitar Center. We decided to go just hang out, you know. And actually, we did uh, last year. Well, see, this past Wednesday was my birthday, May the 3rd. So a year ago on May the 3rd, uh, Ralph and I went to Guitar Center and that's, uh, I'll put the, the link in one of these corners up here where uh, we hit the Guitar Center lottery, but it wasn't inside the store, so to speak. It was uh, <laughs> it was out in the parking lot. You know, if you haven't uh, seen that video, go go and check that out. And it was a weird thing that happened, and I thought it was a setup, but it turned out it wasn't. Uh, I won't give it away here. Go back and check out that video if you're not familiar with it. Uh, so exactly a year later, we go to Guitar Center to hang out, and uh, again, I didn't film in there because uh, it just, I, I just, I don't know, man. It just, uh, not a lot has changed since my last Guitar Center uh, video uh, came out, I guess about a, a month or so ago, maybe a couple of months ago. And um, in that video, I was talking about the 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 help in there, not, not everybody, not just the the one or two people I dealt with. Again, check uh, up here somewhere for the uh, a link for that video. All right. Uh, so we're checking stuff out. We're looking, and uh, uh, I don't know, man. We there's not a lot. There's really not a lot to really look at. I, I did notice uh, on the used uh, on the used wall they had a. Uh, they had some stuff, but man, it looked like, I was like, man, this stuff is usually a little bit, uh, usually a little bit cheaper on the used section. And it, it seemed like everything was jacked up and they had a, I wish I would have took a picture of this. They had a Fender Stevie Ray Vaughan signature strat there. And, uh, and they wanted, uh, I think it was $13.99 for it. But the pit guard was not the the stock pit guard. It said SRV on it. Some dummy put some kind of glitter pit guard on it, and it was. I was like, what? What the hell? What is that? And uh, and you can see where the holes didn't match up because uh, there were screws missing in the pit guard because it didn't match up with the original uh, alignment of the the screw placement, right? So uh, uh, you know I, that looked weird. I was like, man, that's way that's way too much money for that i could see if it had the original pit guard but when you're talking about an srv model those little details make a difference they do to me anyway they you know anyway so in the my last guitar center uh rant video um i was talking about an ltd that i was looking at that uh, i was having trouble getting somebody to help me with well that was gone that was i was shocked that it was gone it was a nice guitar but I don't know. I didn't see it hanging up. I don't know if they sold it or it was behind the counter. Or I'm sure somebody bought it because it was in really decent shape and it wasn't a bad price. So the rest of the stuff they had on the used wall was just junk to me. It looked like a lot of junk. And then, you know, where they have the amps um, and the, the shelves, rather, and um, they'll have stuff on the top uh, shelf of these things, like mostly amps, whatever. Well, they had some more used guitars on the stands. And it's, you know, on the tag, it says used gear. And it was just, it was just junk, man. It was just, and they were asking way too much for that stuff. And, uh, like, dang, man. So, uh, we, we moved from there over to this, the, the, which is just right over here across the, the, the room here to the new, uh, merchandise, the new guitars. Right. And we're looking and it's pretty much the same old, same old. And it was like a diamond in the rough, man. I looked and there was a, there was an EVH, an EVH Wolfgang standard, but it was uh, black, and it was flat black, so it had no gloss. It was, it was, uh, it looked good. I've never, I said, I've never seen a black standard, and it had a uh, the roasted uh, maple neck on it and all that stuff. 
and the and this was new, and it had uh, I think it was six thirty nine is what it was. Uh, of course, no whammy bar was on it, you know, and uh, I was like, man, that looks pretty darn good. I like to go ahead and and uh, pick it up and play it. So uh, Ralph says, yeah, man, go ahead and play. He goes, you know what it's going to sound like? You got a, quite a few of them. I said, yeah, that's why I want to play it. Just to because I know what these pickups will do. I know they're they're hot pickups. This thing hanging here beats everything else they have in line right here on the wall. Of course, their higher end stuff is is way up top, right on the uh, very top uh, hangers up there. That's the the expensive gear, right? Guitars, rather. And you can't reach those unless somebody gets a ladder or whatever. Anyway, so I grabbed the uh, Wolfgang standard, and I'm looking f I'm looking uh, for an amp. Now, my go to amp in Guitar Center is usually a a, a Line Six, you know. Uh, one of those and because i have a, a line six spider four behind me uh on the floor here it's a got two 10 inch speakers uh you know combo amp and i think i think it does excellent for what it is i remember back in the day man people were giving line six a lot of hate and i was like why it's just an amp so if so what if it doesn't have tubes in it big deal i got a the katana 100 watt head right there that uh is amazing in solid state and it's a uh, man i love that that amp head it does great so i look for a, a katana uh, amp because i kind of know how to dial in kind of close to what i like which is nothing fancy just you know some good overdrive and you know something something besides a damn clean tone and uh so i finally find one and ralph grabs uh a case, he sees a cable rolled up over there with a, a, a stool. And I said, yeah, if you can bring me that, man, I appreciate it. So he brings it to me and I, I sit down and here we go. This is, this is, this is where it gets, everything starts rolling. I start uh, just trying to do a couple of power chords, you know, whatever. And it's out of tune. Of course, it's guitar center. Nothing's going to be in tune. Nothing. You know, so I start to tune and I'm, I'm getting in the ballpark. And I get to the high E string again. And uh, the fine tuner is all the way down. You can't turn it no more. So I go up here to the locking screw. And of course, it's tight. <sighs> and I need to do like what R2, R3 locking nut told me. He says, man, next time you go, take your own Allen wrench. I don't know. I, I should have done that. And that is an excellent, excellent idea. And I just never, I didn't think about it till it was too late. So just like in the last video, I see a guitar tech standing over, and this is a different guy. And just by his personality, man, just you know, just for a brief second when I spoke to him, he seemed like he's pretty cool. I mean, you can just tell, man. I mean, uh, when you walk in there, how these people, are, well, the couple of people we talked to that greeted us when we came in, they were very bubbly and cheery. Hi, welcome to Guitar Center. Hey. And I was like, oh, my God. You know, and I was like, I haven't heard that in a long time. I said, hey, what's up, man? And uh, so, but uh, this certain guitar tech, uh, he walked up. He goes, "Hey, how y'all doing? Y'all need some help?" I said, "Nah, man, we're just looking." That's of course before we found the Wolfgang standard. So I'm trying to tune it. Like I said, can't turn the fine tuner no more. And I see him walking. He's just walking around. I, this is the second time, second or third trip, third trip recently to Guitar Center, where the guitar techs are just walking around. And I, I and I said, they're not. They don't have nothing to do. I mean, look at all these guitars in here. I mean, look at what I'm going through. This thing is not even in tune. I mean, there's plenty of things to keep you busy. Again, I'm not sure how it works there. I'm, I, you know, I said this in my last video. I don't know if guitar techs that work there work for Guitar Center or if they're independent contract. I don't know, man. Either way, man. Either way. Get busy getting some guitars set up and tuned up. I mean, good Lord, a basic setup doesn't take no time, you know. So, um, again, I'm uh, trying to do the fine tuner. It won't do that. So I see them. I look through the little space there, of the, the shelf I'm sitting in front of. I said, hey, man, you got an Allen wrench? And I could see him. He walked and he freezes and he goes, he, he kind of paid. I said, you got an Allen wrench, man. I said, I can't. This I can't get this locking screw this tight and I can't tune it. And he goes, Oh yeah, okay. And he 
Now, at least this guy, he he go, and he brings back a like an Allen set. You know, it's all like a Swiss Army knife with a bunch of Allen wrenches on it. He goes, um, I'm pretty sure it's this one. And he, he you know, un, pulls it out right there. And I said, okay, thanks, man. And he hands it to me. He walks off. And so I unscrew the, the uh, locking screw. And as soon as I did that, the high E string said, bing, it broke right on the other side of the locking screw. In between the locking screw and the tuning post, the string broke. The high E string, it broke. And Ralph was standing there and he goes, what was that? And I said, eh, so much for playing this guitar, the, the string just broke. He said, well, you didn't get a chance to really do nothing with it. I said, no, I, I was just trying to get it tuned up so I could play it, you know. And uh, it's a Wolfgang standard, man. It felt good. It 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 looked, it damn looked good, man. And I was like, man, that flat black is sharp. Well, I like that. But I didn't get a chance to really experiment with it much. I, I get up and I walk over I, to the uh, guitar tech and I go to hand him his Allen tool back, you know. And I said, well, so much for that. That didn't work. He said, why? What happened? I said, string broke. And I showed him where it broke. And he goes, oh, I'll take that for you. So he takes the guitar and I'm thinking, oh, okay. He's going to go ahead and put a set of strings on here. Nah. Nah, man. That ain't what he does. He takes the guitar. He turns around and he puts it in a, where they have a multi guitar stand, you know, put like five guitars in a rack, guitar rack. And he sets it down in there and he just turns around and goes back to walking around. And I was like, and I, I looked at her, I said, what is he doing? What, it, Ralph and I were baffled. I was like, is he not going to go ahead and put strings on it? I mean, it's just sitting there. That's a potential sale. You know, I was thinking about buying that guitar, you know. I mean, I wasn't going to buy it, but it did enter my mind. I was like, man, that is that is nice. I like it. So the guy puts it in that little guitar rack, and he just starts wandering off and doing his thing. And I was like, I thought maybe he was going to mess with it in a few minutes. But anyway, we we went ahead and walked around the rest of the store, which is not a big location. It's in a strip mall. And uh, we go and look, we go into the drum room. We go, which this, these rooms aren't far apart. They're just, just uh, 10 feet of each other. You know, there's nothing to it. And uh, we go to the, uh, the uh, keyboard room and the lights. Well, I come back around and I told Ralph, I said, man, I need to use the facility, man. And uh, he's like, all right, I'll be, I'll be back over here at the keyboard. I said, all right, cool. I walk and I look, I go down the, the corridor and the, the door is locked. Okay, somebody's in there. I come back out. 15 minutes later, I go back again. Door is still locked. And I thought, okay. And I said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. It can't be. Sure enough, because I, I remember seeing the guitar tech. When he walked, he went down that quarter. I said, I bet, is he still in there? And uh I'm not joking, man. I mean, you know, look, maybe maybe the dude had an upset stomach, upset stomach. Maybe he wasn't feeling good. I mean, it could be anything. But I I went on a third attempt, like another 15 minutes later, door lock. I said, "My god, man." And uh sure enough, I come back and I double check. He's not at his post. He's I said, "He's what is he doing? Taking an hour break?" There in the facility what what is he doing man and uh so that that just baffled me to no end and uh so uh we uh looked a little bit longer and um we left but <laughs> you know when I, I just for a brief moment i thought oh we we're gonna have a uh, this is gonna be a decent experience and i hate to say this man I hate to say this because I've been to this guitar center many times over the years and I've just seen it slowly decline. And like I said, when you, when you, when you go there, it's different people, man. You see different faces. Now, when uh, Ralph and I went there, uh, the people I saw from the last time I was there, from the last video I made, I saw maybe two people that I recognized from, you know, when I made that video the last time. Everybody else was new faces. So I did some research, man, before I made this video. I went on YouTube. You can look this stuff up. And uh, we all know if you're a guitar player and you, you kind of half-ass follow Guitar Center story, they're in a lot of trouble, man. They're in deep, deep trouble. They're in deep trouble. And uh, 
you know, I, they can't even make enough to pay their debt or the, pay the interest or whatever. I don't see how in the world they're still around. But the thing that j gets me is, and man, I kind of understand this, but on the flip side, I don't. Because, you know, when you're hired to do a job, you should have a little bit of knowledge about the job, about the position, about knowing what you're supposed to do and have, what to help people with. Dude, I remember back in the day, like I said, I've been going to this guitar center a long time and I went to guitar centers in other uh, cities before they even had one here. Um, and guitar center was, they were the bomb, man. You you go in there and it was always busy. There was people playing guitars. There was the people on the phones helping people. There was people buying like pro audio gear. And I mean, it was, it was the real thing, man. Real deal. I mean, it was, it was, they were booming. And then uh, now since the internet and everything else, yeah, that's taken a toll. And of course, you know, I think, I think the king of the mountain right now is Sweetwater. Uh, if, if it's not them, I don't know who it would be. I could be wrong. You know, I, I haven't done any research on that. I'm just, that's just my hypothesis on that. Uh, look, I used to always stay away from Sweetwater um, for years. And I'll tell you why that, that was because I could never get any credit with them. But to be fair, I couldn't get credit with anybody because my credit was horrible. So I finally got something established with Sweetwater as well as Guitar Center, um, you know, ironically enough. Uh, I remember back in the day years ago when you go to Guitar Centers before, you know, online was a real big deal, shopping online, that is. And you have to go to the store, you know, and Guitar Center and apply. And every time I'd go, they'd be like they'd be behind the register. Uh, no, nah, man, they said no. <laughs> and it was like that every time, you know. And I was too young and dumb to realize that every time you did an inquiry like that, it's a hit against your credit. You know, I didn't know that. And I figured they were just looking. So, no, I didn't know it was a, you know, a hit against your credit. Within the past couple of years, I've done a lot of business with Sweetwater, man. I've done a lot of business with Sweetwater. Sweetwater has great customer service. And I always knew that, but I just didn't want to admit it. Now, I'll tell you the company I, I still do business with. I actually ordered a brand new guitar from them um, over the weekend. That's American Musical Supply. I still order from them. And I got a brand new Charvel from them. It was delivered Friday, which was well, yesterday. Um, beautiful guitar, chlorine burst. Lovely guitar. Played it uh, played it a lot today. Amazing playing guitar. So I still, you know, I've been doing business with AMS, man, for over 20 years. That's that's no joke. And I always looked at Sweetwater like, oh, mm-mm. You know, used to get their catalogs in the mail all the time. And that and Musician's Friend and all this other, you know how it is or how it was. But uh, things have changed. So anyway, but... It seems like the past few times I went into the Guitar Center, their customer service uh, reputation just goes down, 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 down. Just like the story I told you with the guy that with, with the Allen wrench set. And he goes, yeah, I think it's this one. You know, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's this one. I, I, I put money on it. That's what he said. And I thought, wow, damn. You know, so, uh, and he was a young guy, you know, but... Again, from the stuff I saw online, you know, a lot of these a lot of these people that work in there aren't able to make a commission. They can't make anything. And uh, that might be why I see new faces all the time, because if you don't if you don't hit a certain uh, selling criteria, uh, they let you go. And I think the uh, the level you have to hit is is outrageous. It's stupid. It's like, how are they supposed to sell that much a day? You know, they're not doing that. So that's probably why. I see new faces in there a lot. I, I I guess absolutely either that or they're quitting. I don't know. And you know they're not. They don't. Guitar Center don't pay them a lot. You know they just don't. So as uh, what we we did this for a reason. The the German butcher and I we did this on purpose. We were there that morning. Okay, we stayed and we we walked around and we looked. We left. We came back that afternoon. There was a whole new set of people in there. So I guess that's their second shift. Okay. So they open. I'm not sure what time they open. I'm going to say, what, 10 o'clock? You know, 9.30, 10 o'clock, something like that. 
usually stores like that don't open real early, you know. So when we uh, got back, it was uh, that afternoon. It was a shift change had already happened. So we uh, did some, we ran some figures and did some math in our head. So the first shift people worked close to five hours, if that. And then second shift come in because it was all a new batch of people. And I thought to myself, Ralph and I were both talking on the way home. I said, how does somebody make it? First of all, at Guitar Center, and you're supposed to sell so much a day or whatever. But third of all, how are you supposed to make it on five hours if you're working five hours at this place? And you can't, how do you pay your bills? How do you do it? How do you do it? And uh, so, you you know, look, so the people that, some of the people that work there that act like they don't really care, I can understand that to a degree, but at the same time, look, man, you went there and put, put in an application. You, you know, you wanted a job. Do your job. And for the love of God, man, I, if you're not sure what to do, look it up. You know, talk to somebody or do some research. Do something. And if you're a guitar tech there, set up some guitars and get them tuned up, please. <laughs> I mean, my God, what do those guys do? And uh, that guitar, that afternoon when we went back, was still sitting in that guitar rack. That Wolfgang Standard still sitting there. And there was a different tech there. And guess who it was? It was the guy from the last video that he couldn't figure out how to get the locking screws on. It was him. I recognized him. He was the other face I recognized. Uh, you know, so I recognized one person from first shift and then another person from the second shift. That was the two people that I remember from the last video. Everybody else, never seen them before. Never seen them before. And um, like I said before, this uh, company or corporation stepped into play with the Guitar Center not long ago. I remember seeing the same people there, and um, especially in the pro audio department back there and all that. I uh, seen the same people. Those people are gone. And those were knowledgeable people, man. They knew their craft. They knew how to help somebody. They knew how to answer your questions. All those people are gone. All of them. And I don't even see the store manager there no more. They, uh, he's gone. So that guy was a decent dude. I never talked to him on a one-on-one -on -one basis, but just by his personality and a couple of times uh, where he helped me, it was, it was real quick when he helped me. It wasn't like we had a conversation, but a couple of times he did help me. He was, he was really laid back, really cool, and he did what he could to help you. He's gone. And now it's like, phew. oh, and one last thing, I'll say this before I sign off. Uh, we did buy a couple of guitars when we, when we returned for the afternoon shift. We bought a couple of guitars there and uh, we paid the guy in cash. All right. Now, this guy, he wasn't a manager. He was a young guy. He ain't no manager. He, ain't, you know, he's just a guy that works there. You know, he's a young guy. And uh, we gave him the cash. And you know what he did? I'm, I'm not insinuating anything. I just thought this was very odd. And he gets on this, uh, and you ever notice the software they're using to ring you up on the screen? It looks like, it reminds me of uh, when I go to the mall and you go like to Sears. Remember, I don't know if you remember this or not, but back in the day when Sears was around, it's like they had the same software uh, when they would ring you up, like the same computers, the same, all the, the lettering and all looked the same on the screen from when I was a young teenager. That never changed with Sears all, all those years. And the Guitar Center is the same. I noticed that when I, I said, do they have the Sears software when you, on their computer system when they check out? Because it looks the same to me. And uh, anyway, he's doing all this and he tells us the total. We give him the, mon the cash money. He takes it, folds it, puts it in his pocket. Puts it in his pocket. And I thought, I didn't hear that cash drawer open up. It didn't go ching ching. It didn't do nothing. You know, not, not a thing. Put it in his pocket. And I kind of looked. Ralph looked. And I said, you see any cameras? He goes, I don't know. Not right in here. I said, there's got to be cameras in here, man. We just not looking good enough. There's got to be. That dude put that money in his pocket. Now, why would he put it in his pocket? Why didn't he put it in the drawer? I don't know. I couldn't tell you. I don't know. I just thought that was very odd. I was like, okay. I mean, did I say anything to the kid? No, nah, I didn't say shit. I didn't say nothing. I was like, whatever, man. You know, I just thought that was odd. All right. That's uh, 
my trip to Guitar Center Part 2. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, man, and, and check out this channel. And don't forget to check out the German Butchers channel as well. And uh, hope to see you next time. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye.